In this video, I'll be telling you all about the cameras I used, show you the photographs I took, and explain the technical problems that had to be overcome in order to capture them. I very much hope to inspire everyone passionate about photography to recapture the true meaning of traditional photojournalism by starting to tell stories with their cameras. In the past four videos, I've been discussing the photographs I took of extremely dangerous, if very eye-catching, stunts. These involved cars and bikes and cannons. In my next series of videos, I'll be talking about my work with animals. Newcomers to show business are often advised never to work with children or animals, and any photographer who's tried to capture either of these subjects will probably know from bitter experience just how wise that advice is. While such subjects are certainly more easily available to photograph than crashing cars or blazing bikes, both require patience and some specialist knowledge in order to capture truly memorable images. During my work as a photojournalist, I photographed animals ranging from dogs to dolphins and killer whales to cute kittens. These were all shot, typically, on my trusted Nikons. One of my favourite stories to cover were those involving horses, with subjects ranging from photographing the daily life of technicians in the UK's drug testing laboratory, to horse guards training their animals to remain calm and steady when standing close to military bands or even lone buglers. One of the most enjoyable stories I worked on involved a football-playing horse who loved nothing better than a brisk game and then accompanying his owner to the local pub where he swallowed a couple of pints of beer, usually at a single gulp. The horse, a magnificent seven-year-old stallion named King, was owned by Bill Foyle, a farmer and cowboy enthusiast. He was such a fan that he even decorated his home in the best traditions of the Wild West. Bill, who had purchased King from a market trader for £35, soon discovered his horse not only enjoyed playing football, but was rather good at it, especially when in goal. Admittedly, the football was occasionally deflated by King's over-eager mouth as he leapt to make a catch, but Bill considered this a small price to be paying for playing. I discovered this fascinating story while going through a local Essex newspaper, which had relegated its count to a single column and one small photograph. After a few phone calls, Bill proved only too willing to cooperate and explained that he played football with his horse every Saturday afternoon during the season. The following weekend, the three of us spent a very exhilarated 90 minutes on a recreation ground. before heading off to the pub for a well-deserved drink. There are some basic techniques you should master before trying to take photographs of domesticated animals, whether indoors or out. The psychological status of an animal during a photographic session is illustrated here. On the graph, time is plotted on the horizontal line, and this will vary according to the species of animal concerned, their age, whether you have one species on its own or a mixture. The vertical scale shows the degree of excitement exhibited by the animal. When first introduced into your studio, most animals, especially young ones, will exhibit a high degree of interest and excitement. They clamber around to explore and familiarize themselves with their new surroundings. After a varying period of time, you'll reach a situation which I have termed 
the plateau of maximum cooperation. This is marked A-B on the graph. As time passes, the animal or animals get so used to their surroundings and so bored by the idea of being photographed that they reach a stage in which they are understimulated. They then either become increasingly reluctant to cooperate or simply fall asleep. The trick here is to maintain them at the correct level of alertness for as long as possible, calming them down if they appear to get overly excited and engaging their interest when they appear to be bored and perhaps overly passive. In my next video, which I'll be posting in two weeks time, I'll provide more practical advice on how best to photograph animals and also describe my work photographing lions. And this may one greedy lion cub produced in a baby boy. If you'd like to see some more of my photographs, please go to www.thewayitwas.uk If you'd like to purchase a copy of my book, The Way It Was, then please go to the same website and take a look at what it contains. If you lived through the 60s, it will bring back some memories. If you never lived through the 60s, you'll find a foreign country where they do things very differently. Thank you.